Hey guys, so my name is Drew Fish and our group chose to do our drive project on an internship that I had this past summer. My internship was a marketing internship with the Greensboro Coliseum Complex, kind of just working on marketing campaigns for all of their major concerts this past summer. So I was excited about this internship at the beginning because I was looking forward to getting into the sports and entertainment marketing industry in the future. And following my interview for the internship, I kind of like had the idea that, it, and it was apparent to me from information I got during the interview that I would have ample opportunities and responsibilities that would facilitate the development of my professional skills. So to kind of look into what their current plan is, uh, the job was an unpaid position. The only compensation that interns received were they were given free concert tickets for all of their concerts and events over the summer. And uh, given that this position was unpaid, I only worked on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So when I was working, I was typically only given administrative and busy work, such as making copies or running errands for the marketing department. It was definitely sort of demoralizing as an intern because it felt as though my skills weren't being totally optimized and also that I wasn't being given those opportunities to help in a meaningful and impactful way for the, the, for the firm. So the tickets just didn't feel like a sufficient form of compensation to motivate me because uh, it, I just not that big of a music fan and I definitely would have preferred a monetary type of compensation. And then the work that I was given, it just wasn't exactly motivating because it wasn't self-fulfilling and also it just didn't help develop those skills that I mentioned earlier or gain the necessary experience that I would need to benefit my professional career in the future. So now I'm gonna throw it on over to Austin and he's gonna talk about why that plan just didn't work. So the primary reason why, why the Greensboro Coliseum's incentive plan was unsuccessful was because it failed to implement prop, a proper payment, payment plan and provide work that was motivating to its employees. So as a result, Drew and other interns had little desire or commitment to show up and perform the work. And additionally, their desire to go above and beyond while at work was uh, greatly diminished. So using what we've learned from our course material, it's easy to see why Drew's uh, internship was not successful in its attempt to provide motivation for its employees. To further diagnose why management's plan was unsuccessful, we need to examine extrinsic and intrinsic factors of motivation and where exactly management's plan failed to properly motivate its interns. So the first area where the Greensboro Coliseum failed in its ability to extrins was to extrinsically motivate its employees. Now, e extrinsic motivation is defined as motivation that comes from someone or something external. So using expectancy theory, we can analyze and determine why exactly management's incentive plan of show tickets in exchange for labor just doesn't work. Briefly, expectancy theory states that an employee will be extrinsically motivated if there's an incentive plan that meets the criteria of expectancy, uh, instrumentality, and valence. Now, management's incentive plan uh, met the expectancy criteria because the tasks that they did assign to the interns were so simple and menial that the interns did believe that they could do it. Now, management's incentive plan uh, did meet the instrumentality criteria because uh, the labor uh, was made so clear by uh, the Greensboro Coliseum that they, that they didn't have to worry about not getting rewarded. However, where management's incentive plan failed to extrinsically motivate was because it didn't meet the criteria of valence. Now, this is because the concert tickets were not uh, specifically desired uh, as a form of payment by the interns. So in order for management's incentive plan to have worked better, it's imperative to provide a reward that the interns actually want, which can be done simply by asking uh, the interns what they would like as a uh, form of incentive. So the second area where management failed in its ability to uh, it uh, was to intrinsically motivate its interns. Now, intrinsic motivation is defined as motivation that is within the individual and naturally satisfying. So it's difficult for managers because external rewards and compensation don't typically intrinsically motivate. So if a manager wants to intrinsically motivate his or her employees, it's imperative that he creates a job and working environment that is intrinsically motivating. And one way to do this is uh, simply to follow the job characteristics model. Now, the job characteristics characteristics model states that jobs are motivating if they meet three psychological states, which include meaningfulness, responsibility uh, of work outcome, and knowledge of work results. So in order to do this, uh, the model states that, that in order to meet these three uh, psychological states, um, a specific job or task needs to uh, 
meet five core requirements, which include skill variety, task identity, task significance, autonomy, and feedback. Now to further examine why Drew's internship was not intrinsically motivating, our group decided to perform this analysis uh, on Drew's internship and see if it did meet any of the five requirements. The first requirement that we examined was skill variety, which is defined as uh, the degree to which a job varies in tasks and skills. Now our group came to the conclusion that Drew's internship was not, uh, or did not meet the criteria of skill variety because Drew was doing the same repetitive tasks. Uh, task identity, which is defined as completing a task from beginning to end, our group determined that, believe it or not, the internship actually did provide task identity because uh, the tasks that he was assigned were so uh, basic and short that he was very easily able to see them through. Uh, task identity, or rather task significance, uh, which is defined as work that has value and meaning, uh, our group came to the conclusion that Drew's internship did not meet this criteria because the work was so menial and basic that he didn't feel like it was actually contributing to the greater cause of the organization. For autonomy, which is defined as freedom to make decisions, we concluded again that uh, Drew's internship did actually provide autonomy because some of the, the tasks uh, were so basic that he really didn't need any oversight. And lastly, uh, Drew indicated that he, uh, the internship did not provide any feedback because uh, managers were not or only met with them at the very end of the internship to uh, discuss their performance. So since the job did not meet three of the five requirements of uh, the job characteristic model, there's clearly no way that this job could have been intrinsically motivating. So now Sandy is going to take over and discuss, discuss some specific alternatives and solutions to make this job more intrinsically and extrinsically motivating. Hello, now I will discuss the solution our group believes will help the Greensboro Coliseum get more motivation from their interns. First, we have variable pay. <clears throat> variable pay. Not only is an unpaid internship in a gray area in the legal system, but interns should be paid enough to live in a new city for a short period of time, or to survive in the town they live in, while helping the business grow. Additional compensation can also come in other forms, like bonus incentives for projects completed and free work day meals. We suggest that this internship pays an hourly wage and variable pay by commission. When the intern reaches a certain amount of individual ticket sales, they are awarded a commission. Next up is identify a dedicated supervisor, proper training. Before they bring the intern on board, they need to make sure they have a person dedicated to training and guiding the intern through their experience. And perhaps, most importantly, wants to do these things. Their supervisor shouldn't be the lowest level employee, otherwise the intern will assume that the company does not take them seriously. At a minimum, they should have a supervisor who is able to motivate the interns so that they will go back to college with great things to say about the company. Training can help employees understand how their work fits into their company structure, mission, goals, and achievements. As a result, employees can become more motivated and excited about their work as they understand what they do matters to the success of the organization. Training is an investment employers make in their workforce. When companies are <clears throat> offering training, they indicate that they value their people and the contributions they make. They also send a message that the organization values progress both in organizational achievements as well in the careers of its people. Naturally, this creates attachment, loyalty, and enthusiasm among staff. The work needs to contribute to the end product. By giving varied responsibilities, so give the intern both day-to-day -day team responsibilities as you would an entry-level employee, as well as long-term project, students and most people like to learn. So show them as much about the business as possible. Pro <clears throat> projects should be meaningful to their business, such as a competitive survey and a real learning experience for them. Plus, they will have something to talk about in an interview with a future employer. 
being able to see the final product is very emotion, very motivational as an employee. For this internship, we believe the best way to do this is by giving meaningful work. So instead of making copies all day as the intern, the intern will actively work on <coughs> marketing campaigns within the community with the goal of increasing ticket sales. We also suggest that they give minor responsibilities at the event in which the intern was pro promoting so they can see the outcome of their performances. They need to offer regular feedback, give honest feedback that is. Whether this is through monthly meetings with their supervisor or an end of internship review session with the team, they need to know how they did and what they can work on to improve. Establish a regular process for this feedback and evaluate their work product as it comes in. Need for affiliation working in teams. There was a disconnect between the interns and full-time staff at the Greensboro Coliseum. So we suggest bringing the interns into the company culture. Hopefully as a company, they have some kind of event that the office can rally around. Whether that's tickets to a baseball game or even just the occasional happy hour, regardless of the tradition, they need to include interns in this fun. It's a great way for them to connect with colleagues outside of, <coughs> of their supervisors. It can help interns gain better appreciation of what the company is all about Another way is to influence affiliation needs, and this is by putting the interns in teams and allowing them to work together to achieve a common goal. In this case, they will be promoting and marketing for events at the Coliseum. One of the best ways to motivate the employees is through teamwork. It is proven through research that when employees feel included as part of a team and part of a work family, they will be more productive and more efficient. Thank you very much.